What's good, big dogs? It's your boy Andrew back with another video for the Dynasty BDG YouTube channel. If you guys don't know who I am, you don't know why I'm here, you got to get out from under the damn rock. It's been about two weeks now, man. We've been posting Dynasty Fantasy Football content here with the BDGE team. Me, Adam, Nick, everybody over here trying to get you guys the best Dynasty Fantasy Football content. So make sure you guys are subscribed to that channel. We are posting on the main channel right now, but after about two more weeks, no more videos over there. So you got to make sure you're subscribed to the Dynasty main channel. If you're not over there, you're not going to see the videos. So make sure you subscribe to that. Also, if this is your first time seeing me, I have my own personal channel. It's at The League FFB. I'd love for you guys to come over, check some of that content out. We're making content there three to five times a week. So make sure you go subscribe to that as well. If you want to support your boy, if not, you know what? Fuck them. But that's not what we're here for today. What we're here for today is a part two to my first video. If you guys didn't see the first one, we talked about the seven best picks to make in your Dynasty Fantasy Football startup drafts. You guys clearly liked that video. So I said, you know what? I'm going to be a man of the people. I'll give you guys what you want. I'm going to give you a part two. So we're talking about rounds eight to 14 today, the best picks you can make in your Dynasty startup drafts. And so without further ado, we got to hop into this video, but we're trying to stay with tradition here. So we got to tuck those shirts. In. So starting here in the eighth round, there is a lot of talent still on the board. Obviously, there's some young running backs in Javante Williams, DeAndre Swift, a really good tight end that you guys could be drafting in Evan Engram. And then there's some wide receivers here that I really like in Terry McLaurin, Christian Watson, Chris Godwin. I was probably going to be between Chris Godwin and Terry McLaurin, but ultimately I ended up going with Terry McLaurin as the best pick in this round. He's coming off the board here as the wide receiver 31 at the 806. Now, Terry McLaurin, he's been the wide receiver one over there in Washington for many years now for the Washington Commanders. It's been about six years that he's going to be in the NFL at this point. And throughout his career, he's typically finished around that wide receiver 25 as far as fantasy football goes for most of these seasons. So he's really been this low end wide receiver two for your fantasy football teams over his last couple years. Now, in startup drafts, you can usually select Terry McLaurin around that wide receiver 31. Like I showed you guys over there on that last screen, he's coming off the board pretty late. And even at this price, I do think that there is a little bit of a value on Terry McLaurin. And like I said, he's entering his sixth year as a professional. He's seeing about 130 targets every single year. So he is that number one target. He's seeing a lot of volume. And that's really what we want to see out of our fantasy football wide receivers. And with those 130 targets that he's seeing each year, he's seeing about 1,100 receiving yards on average. So Terry McLaurin has been putting up numbers. It just hasn't been those elite numbers that some people want to see out of Terry McLaurin. Now, a lot of the times I would say Terry McLaurin is outperforming his current situation he has been put in some pretty rough quarterback situations over the course of his career when we look at the quarterbacks that he has played with since entering the NFL the list is pretty long and a lot of the names are pretty ugly and when you look at how many quarterbacks Terry McLaurin has played with over his first five seasons in the NFL he's played with a total of 10 quarterbacks some of these quarterbacks that he's played with include Case Keenum Alex Smith Dwayne Haskins Taylor Heineke Carson Wentz and Sam Howell it is not a good group of quarterbacks that Terry McLaurin has played with. Now, I bring that up because as it sits right now, the Washington Commanders currently have the number two pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, and we definitely expect this team to take a shot at an upgrade at the quarterback position. This is a team who has been rumored to be able to trade up to the number one, but if they even stay at number two, this is a team who's going to be in that sweepstakes for a Drake May, a Jaden Daniels, a Caleb Williams, they're going to be seeking a quarterback upgrade this year. And I think a quarterback upgrade, obviously, if that rookie quarterback turns into what we think they are going to be, is going to be a significant help to Terry McLaurin in fantasy football. And with that being said, I do think that Terry McLaurin with the right quarterback could see a significant increase in value in dynasty fantasy football. And I think very similarly to what we saw with DJ Moore. And I know Gut is going to be editing this video, so I don't want to slander the Panthers. But keep in mind that DJ Moore was posting similar numbers to Terry McLaurin when he was spending his time in Carolina. He was kind of stuck in that wide receiver two, that low end wide receiver two purgatory that we've seen at the fantasy football wide receiver position. And then he gets that upgrade at quarterback. He goes to the Chicago Bears. He plays with Justin Fields, who again, sorry gut, was probably the best quarterback that DJ Moore has ever played with, maybe outside of Cam Newton. But even Cam Newton was not the Cam Newton that we thought about when he was playing with DJ Moore in Carolina. But once he did get that quarterback upgrade, DJ Moore showed us he could be a wide receiver one for fantasy football. And he did go post his first wide receiver one season ever for fantasy football after going to Chicago. Now I think with a quarterback 
quarterback upgrade. I do think that Terry McLaurin is going to follow a similar path to what DJ Moore did this year in 2023. And it's also worth noting that the Washington Commanders went out this offseason. They hired Cliff Kingsbury, but it seems like Cliff Kingsbury is going to be targeting a reunion with Caleb Williams. And if not, like I said, he's going to get a Drake May type of quarterback. And I think that's going to be fantastic for Terry McLaurin and this offense because what Cliff Kingsbury runs is that air raid offense. He's often putting two to four wide receivers out. They're attacking downfield. That is what Terry McLaurin is best at. And as well as attacking downfield, you have to remember that Cliff Kingsbury is partially responsible for the development of Kyler Murray at the NFL level. So he knows how to develop young quarterbacks at this level, which is going to be very good for the rookie that falls into place here in Washington. So all of those things put together, I think it's just a good mix for Terry McLaurin. And that's why I'm targeting him here in this round. Now, moving on to the ninth round here, this is a round that has a lot of value at the running back position. I still like some of the wide receivers in this round, like Amari Cooper and Christian Kirk specifically, but I think this round is perfect for those teams that want to wait on the running back position because I like to target the wide receivers earlier in these drafts in the middle rounds, and then I like to attack these running backs as we get down to this type of the draft. I do like David Montgomery. I do like Joe Mixon. I think these are the two best running backs in this round, the most bang for your buck, but I think that David Montgomery at the 902 is going to be the best selection. I think he holds a little bit less risk than a guy like Joe Mixon. Now, David Montgomery has been a very solid fantasy football running back, too, for the majority of his career. He's actually never finished outside of the top 24 running backs, so he's been very consistent at this position. And he's shown us that in the right offense, in the right scheme, he can have running back one upside, kind of like what he showed us here in Detroit this year. There were stretches there where we were very confident putting David Montgomery in our lineups because of the production that he was putting together for us on the field. Now, some people may be scared to invest into David Montgomery, primarily because they drafted a stud rookie running back last year in Jameer Gibbs. And this is the perfect one-two punch in the NFL. It might be the best backfield in the National Football League. They're definitely very good for fantasy football. And I think both of these guys are very reliable for your fantasy football teams. We need to consider that the Detroit Lions paid David Montgomery a three-year, $18 million contract just last season. I think he's going to finish out that contract. I think he's going to be worth every penny of that contract to this Detroit Lions offense. And because of that, I assume he's still going to be a part of their plans moving forward under offensive coordinator Ben Johnson, who is back this year, and head coach Dan Campbell. And PFF graded this Detroit Lions offensive line as the second best rushing offensive line in football as they close the 2023 season heading into the playoffs. They also gave Frank Ragnow, the center for the Detroit Lions, the best PFF grade amongst all centers. And they gave Penny Sewell the second highest grade amongst offensive tackles over the last five seasons. So what that tells us is this Detroit Lions offensive line is an elite run blocking line. And this is the group that's going to be blocking for David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs for the foreseeable future. Penny Sewell, he's going to get a contract extension. Ragnow is under contract for the next couple of seasons. And so behind this offensive line, I think David Montgomery is going to be super efficient and he's going to be a good volume play for your fantasy football rosters for the foreseeable future. Not to mention that David Montgomery is also going to be receiving a lot of those goal line opportunities in this offense as well. Now, typically in fantasy football, we do choose to avoid avoid these older running backs just because of that running back age cliff that we see with this position at times. But I do think at the running back position these days, we do need to generally focus on the running back position looking at one or two year windows. I think either or some people might argue that you should only be looking at running backs from year to year. But I think two years is still safe enough that if you can project that far, that's kind of what we need to do with these running backs. Now, I was looking into an article over at Fantasy Points. They put together a great graphic kind of showing a visual representation of what that running back age cliff actually looks like. And on average, what we're seeing is that running backs typically see their primes from years two to year seven in their NFL careers. And then after year seven, we see that that production does dip below that rookie year number. So they often are worse than they were as rookies after year seven. So that is typically when we actually mark that as the age cliff. And with David Montgomery, he has just finished his fifth NFL season. So what this is showing us is we could probably project about two more years of David Montgomery producing for us and producing for our fantasy football teams before he actually gets hit with that running back age cliff. And I do think that David Montgomery's current situation is the perfect situation for him. I don't know if the GM there in Detroit actually took this into account. It would be interesting if he actually did. But David Montgomery has about two more years on that contract. It's about two more years until that age cliff. So I think he should finish this contract here in Detroit, still giving us solid production for fantasy football, which to me makes him a good value at this point in fantasy football startup drafts. And once you get a year or two years of production out of David Montgomery, you can then make a 
next move to go find your next running back, either in a rookie draft or maybe make a trade for a running back. But I think this is a guy that you can plug into your running back two slot for at least the next two seasons. Now, moving on to round 10, this round is a round that's kind of littered with these older running backs and Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry. They're all either injured or committee backs, even the committee backs and Jalen Warren, Zach Charbonnet. So I don't really love this round for the running back position. I think there's just too much risk. And the round before is definitely where you would rather target that running back. I do think that there's some good value in Calvin Ridley and Deontay Johnson at the wide receiver position. But I think the best pick in this round and the pick that has the most upside is going to be at that 10.04. It's Michael Mayer, tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. And the reason why I lean Michael Mayer here is because this is probably the point in the draft where you have to kind of take some upside shots at that tight end position before it really does start to thin out later in the drafts. I do think that guys like Calvin Ridley and Deontay Johnson are good values, but I think that there's still a lot of value at the wide receiver position as we get later in the drafts. So this is primarily just shooting an upside shot here with Michael Mayer. And really, if we were going to look back at what Michael Mayer put together in his rookie season, obviously it's going to be not a lot of production from Michael Mayer. He really put together a season where he had 27 catches for 304 yards and two touchdowns. But I need to remind you guys that even though we've had guys like Dalton Kincaid and Sam Laporta who break out year one, they have a good fantasy football season. That is not really the norm for the tight end position in fantasy football. And let me remind you of a guy named Trey McBride, who coming out of his rookie season posted a year in 2022 where he had 29 receptions for 265 yards and one touchdown. And I say that because one of the most powerful and reliable laws of fantasy football is that year two tight end breakout. And to me, Michael Mayer screams and fits that bill of a breakout at that tight end position. Because remember, not too long ago, many of your favorite fantasy football creators had Michael Mayer in the same breath, in the same conversation as guys like Sam Laporta, as guys like Dalton Kincaid and maybe even had them higher or above them in their rookie rankings coming into the 2023 season. I'm one of those guys who was very high on Michael Mayer. I had Michael Mayer as my tight end one in the 2023 class. And I want to go back and I want to reference that Fantasy Points article again, because in this article, they talk about that year two breakout. There is an insane number of top six tight end breakouts that occur in year two of their NFL careers. Obviously, Trey McBride being the most recent, but this is one of the best bets that you can make on statistically if you're trying to project breakouts in fantasy football and so I am targeting Michael Mayer as a breakout here in this round I'm hoping he takes that jump in year two under the same coaching staff there isn't going to be that switch that we had in the middle of the season from Josh McDaniels over to Antonio Pierce that's tough on a rookie man that's tough for a guy to adjust there's going to be consistency this year. And I think one of the best things about this year two tight end breakout is that once they do break out in this second year of their NFL careers, they kind of hover around this baseline for at least the next two years before hitting their primes or their peak in performance in about years five and year six. So if you do hit on a pick like this in Michael Mayer, it is going to set you up and give you an advantage on your dynasty fantasy football teams for a long time in your leagues, which is going to help you chase that championship, which is the whole goal of this thing, right? Now, moving on to round 11, there's a couple different directions that you could go. I think that there's some value in a pick like Hollywood Brown here at the 1103. I also think there's some value in a running back like James Conner that you could draft at the 1106. But I think the best positional value in this round is actually going to be at the quarterback position. So this is the round where I would kind of be targeting my QB3 or my backup quarterback in these super flex leagues. Specifically, I would be targeting a guy like Daniel Jones at the 1105 or Derek Carr at the 1107. But I do think that Daniel Jones is the best pick in this round because I think he has a little bit more upside than a guy like Derek Carr. And Daniel Jones and the Giants are coming off of a pretty forgettable season in 2023. Daniel Jones missed a good chunk of the year due to some injuries that he suffered, a neck injury in week five, an ACL tear in week 10. And obviously the New York Giants did not look good for the majority of the season just because they don't really have the infrastructure set up there in New York yet. And although really when we look back at what Daniel Jones has done throughout his career, I think it's safe to say that he really has not put it all together yet. He just hasn't given us that full package to show that he was worthy of that number six pick overall in 2019. But despite that, Daniel Jones did receive a contract extension last offseason. He got four years, 160 million dollars from the New York Giants. So whether they want to be committed to Daniel Jones or not because of the play, they are financially committed to Daniel Jones 
Jones. So he is going to be their starting quarterback going into 2023. And like I said, even though Jones hasn't necessarily translated to on the field NFL success, he has been pretty solid for fantasy football. He's just a year removed from a 2022 season where he was averaging 18.4 fantasy points per game. And this was good for the 10th best quarterback in fantasy football. And to go along with that season, he also has two more seasons in his NFL career where he's been a top 17 fantasy football quarterback from a fantasy points per game perspective because he's been averaging those top 17 fantasy points per game numbers over the last couple years getting him as QB 25 is a pretty good value and I think this is the perfect type of quarterback to have as your quarterback three on your fantasy football rosters because he does have upside if they do kind of put it together there in New York and like I said despite not having the infrastructure around him Jones has still put up these numbers so it has been somewhat positive for your fantasy football teams the narratives for the on the field play in real life are not matching the production that he's putting for you in your fantasy football teams so that's one of the times where this does disconnect in that NFL to fantasy football narrative but Nick talked about it on his recent video when he was talking about buy lows he did talk about Daniel Jones as a buy low and he talked about how awful the New York Giants have been at protecting Daniel Jones the good news is the GM has committed to Daniel Jones he says that he is the quarterback for them moving forward they currently hold the number six pick in the NFL draft which does mean that this is a team who most likely will be able to add a wide receiver to this team whether that be a Malik Neighbors a Rome Odunze or even if they choose to kind of go a different direction in the first round and earlier in that second round go take a wide receiver like a Brian Thomas Jr maybe a Lad McConkey something like that, they're going to get help for Daniel Jones. You pair that rookie wide receiver with a guy like Darren Waller, who they paid a lot of money last year, and also a guy like Jalen Hyatt, who they drafted in the draft last year to help this offensive attack. I think those are going to be good things for Daniel Jones. And there is a chance that if they hit on that wide receiver prospect and Jones has a healthy season, you could see him really outperform this ADP which again will hopefully lead to a much better 2024 season than the Giants and Daniel Jones were able to put together in 2023. Now moving on to this 12th round, there is a lot of upside in some fantasy football running backs here. You have the second year running back in Kendra Miller there at the 1205. You also have a guy like Zamir White at the 1211. So these are probably some good upside picks if you wanted a running back in this round. I also think that there's a good value in a tight end like Dalton Schultz here coming off the board as tight end 17 at the 1206. But ultimately, in this round, I do think that the best pick is going to be Jerry Judy coming off the board as wide receiver 44 there at that 1203. He's the guy who I probably think is going to be the best value and potentially has the most range of outcomes at this position, but I do think that he can outperform this ADP if a couple things happen. Now, admittedly, I've never been a huge fan of Jerry Judy. I just haven't loved his game and I really haven't loved the situation that he's had there in Denver. Pretty obvious up to this point that that match has not been a match that has been made in heaven. It just hasn't worked out for the Denver Broncos and Jerry Judy but it's so crazy to me to think that Jerry Judy is still just 24 years old he's still on his rookie contract it's pretty clear to me that the Jerry Judy and the Denver Broncos marriage is coming to a divorce here pretty soon so I am kind of taking a gamble here because I think that Jerry Judy in his next situation could be a lot better than Jerry Judy in his current situation and in a tier of wide receivers here that are Jacoby Myers Quinton Johnston DeAndre Hopkins I think I'm just much more willing to take a shot on a guy like Jerry Judy because like I said he's young than the Jacoby Myers, the DeAndre Hopkins. He probably has more upside than a guy like Quinton Johnston or a Jacoby Myers. So this just feels like I'm taking that shot or taking that swing. And if I miss on it, I miss on it because I already have the wide receiver depth that I like to build earlier in these drafts. So I'm going to take that shot here with Jerry Judy while he's still young and still has the opportunity to grow from a change in situation. Now, 2024 could be a little bit rough for Jerry Judy. I understand that. This isn't a pick that I am taking for the short-term gains. This is more of a long-term play because we know that the uncertainty at the QB position in Denver is something that's going to be into play this year. We know that Sean Payton benched Russell Wilson in the last two games of the season last year. He went with Jarrett Stidham. There is some uncertainty on whether or not Russell Wilson will be on this roster here in 2024 because if the Denver Broncos want to trade or cut Russell Wilson, they will be eating about $85 million in dead money and they could split that up over the next couple seasons if they do it after the June 1st deadline. But that's a lot of dead money that the Denver Broncos might be willing to eat on moving on from Russell Wilson. It's also worth noting that they hold the 12th overall pick in the NFL draft. Now, even though that might not be a pick where you can take a guy like Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, they one could be a candidate that could be trying to move up in the NFL draft to go get their franchise quarterback, or they could be a team that is kind of in the mix for a Bo Nix or a Michael Penix Jr. or maybe even a JJ McCarthy here at that 12th pick or early in the second round. So like I said, this is a pick where I'm going to be kind of targeting that long-term outcome, that long-term play. I 
want to see where Jerry Judy is next because if Jerry Judy were to ever land in a situation like Kansas City or Buffalo or one of these places where he gets a significant upgrade at a quarterback and gets in an offense that wants to use him in an appropriate and correct way, I do think that that could be a significant value increase for a guy like Jerry Judy and the perfect opportunity to buy low here in the 12th round of your startups. Now moving on to the 13th round, there is a lot of guys in this round that I don't necessarily like. I don't think it's the strongest of rounds. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking for value. I'm looking for upside. And I think that there's a couple players that have either value or upside. Some of them being Cortland Sutton here at the 13-2, maybe a guy like Isaiah Likely at the 1305, or even Michael Wilson at the 1307. But I think the player that embodies both upside and value is probably going to be Michael Wilson. So he is my best pick here in the 13th round coming off the board as the wide receiver 49 at the 1307. And in 2023, Michael Wilson missed about four games due to a shoulder injury, which I would say is slightly worrisome for a guy like Michael Wilson because a majority of his college career, he did miss a lot of games to injury. So you don't really want to see him put together a injury riddled career here in Arizona, but I'm willing to write this year off as the injury, not take too much of that into consideration because the situation he's in here in Arizona is going to be a great situation for Michael Wilson moving forward. And I think it's pretty evident that Michael Wilson is going to see a lot of opportunity here in 2024. Now, again, I'm going to reference that buy low video that Nick did because Michael Wilson was in that one as well. And I, I promise, Nick, look, I'm, I'm not copying your video. I also just think you have a great mind. I have a great mind. We think alike, brother. But I do think that there is a couple good points that Nick made. The first being that Hollywood Brown is a unrestricted free agent. So there is a chance that the Arizona Cardinals move on from a guy like Hollywood Brown, which would open up some opportunity for a guy like Michael Wilson. Now, on the contrary, there is the stipulation that the Arizona Cardinals currently have the number four pick in the NFL draft. So this team is likely the prime candidate for a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. So probably is a wash as far as the opportunities go for Michael Wilson. But I think playing alongside a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. is only going to mean better things for a guy like Michael Wilson because he's no longer going to be that primary receiving weapon for the team. I think Hollywood played a lot of the times in the slot. So it's not necessarily him seeing the number one corner. Michael Wilson was seeing that a good amount of the time. So him playing with a guy like Marvin Harrison is going to help him out in that regard. And we also have to account that there is going to be a healthy Kyler Murray throwing him the football this year. Kyler Murray wasn't healthy for the majority of the season last year. And a lot of the times that Michael Wilson was playing before he got hurt was without Kyler Murray. So we haven't really seen Michael Wilson with a quarterback like Kyler Murray up to this point. Now, Nick also mentioned how that 9.7 yards per target, good for the 15th in the NFL, and that 14.9 yards per reception, good for 26th in the NFL, are good numbers for Michael Wilson as a rookie. But I do think that Matt Harmon's in-season reception perception numbers actually provide a deeper insight as to why Michael Wilson has some potential upside and the keys to success here in Arizona as a wide receiver at the NFL level. I think really the main ones being that Michael Wilson demonstrated a 70% success rate against man coverage as a rookie and a 70.4% success rate against press coverage in his rookie report here by Matt Harmon. Those are very good numbers that we want to see out of rookie wide receivers. And to go along with those numbers, Michael Wilson also saw an 85.7% contested catch rate, which was one of the best marks for all rookie wide receivers in 2023. And I do think that these numbers indicate a strong foundation for potential success at the NFL level. And actually in this article, Matt Harmon actually kind of compares these numbers because they are eerily similar to what we saw Michael Pittman Jr. post as a rookie in Indianapolis. So in the 13th round here, being able to get a guy who was drafted pretty highly by the Arizona Cardinals has the opportunity to see some more opportunities here in 2024, even though the box score didn't show a lot of statistical numbers for you to kind of look at as far as receiving yards or receptions or touchdowns. We did see the success rates that we wanted to see out of Michael Wilson Jr. So this is an upside swing here. I'm not saying that he's going to turn into Michael Pittman Jr. And I don't think Matt Harmon is saying that either, but there is a lot here with Michael Wilson to show that he could develop into a good NFL wide receiver. And that's all I want at this this point here in my dynasty startups. Now moving on to the last round that I'm going to cover in this video, we are in the 14th round. I know it's been a little bit of a longer video, but if you've made it to this point, make sure you hit that button that looks like this. Make sure you're subscribed to the dynasty channel. But here in the 14th round, there's a couple players that kind of catch my attention. Demario Douglas, Gabe Davis, Mike Williams, even a guy like Khalil Shakir. So really it is the wide receivers in this round that I am targeting. I do think that there's a lot of value in Mike Williams, but I think he possesses a lot of risk, potentially being a cap casualty coming off of an ACL tear, the way he plays a new head coach. There's a lot of risk in Mike Williams. And if you're willing to take that risk here, you could potentially see some reward 
But I do think that the best player in this round and the guy that I'm going to be drafting is at that 1402, and that is going to be Demario Douglas for the New England Patriots. Now, Demario Douglas wasn't really on anybody's draft boards coming into 2023. I know in quite a few leagues, I was able to pick up Demario Douglas after my rookie drafts off of the waiver wire. So that kind of shows you how deep of a sleeper Douglas was coming into the 2023 season. But due to a couple injuries here in New England, he was able to earn a little bit more playing time, and he did actually pretty well with the playing time that he got here in New England in 2023. I think Douglas has shown that he can at least be the wide receiver three on this team. And some of the success rates that he posted here as a rookie show us that he could potentially earn even more than that wide receiver three role here in New England, especially if they have a better offensive play calling and also if they get an upgrade at that quarterback position. Now I'm going back to that in-season report that we saw from Matt Harmon. Again, we're looking at these success rate numbers. Douglas posted a 72.7 success rate versus man coverage and a 71.4% success rate versus press coverage. He also has a very solid package of release moves that he uses off of the line of scrimmage. So I think when you pair all of these things together, it does show that he could get a larger role in this offense going into year two of his NFL career. And again, I talk about that offensive change, maybe a quarterback upgrade. It's very important to understand that the New England Patriots are kind of entering a new identity here in 2024. They've officially moved on from Bill Belichick, obviously a Hall of Fame coach, but he was stuck in his old ways. They hired a guy in Gerard Mayo. Now, I don't know if I love the hiring of Gerard Mayo, but it's going to be interesting to see what this team looks like with that moving forward. And also, like I've mentioned before for some of these other teams, this is a team that holds the number three overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. They are going to be able to take a Caleb Williams, a Drake May, a Jaden Daniels, or this is a team that could potentially find an upgrade at the quarterback position in free agency. There are some quarterbacks like Kirk Cousins, Gardner Minshew, and others that they could get who would probably be an upgrade to a guy like Mac Jones. Obviously not what we want. We want to go see them go get one of those top quarterbacks if we're banking on Demario Douglas. But regardless of where they get it, this is a team that is going to be addressing that quarterback situation. And after addressing the quarterback situation, I do expect the upgrade for Demario Douglas because there are also some teammates of his that are going to be free agents this offseason. Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Henry, Mike Gesicki. These are just some of the receiving options for the New England Patriots who are going to be unrestricted free agents heading into the offseason. So if they choose to move on from some of these guys, which I do think that they will choose to move on from them, Demario Douglas should fall into some more opportunities. And what he does with those is still to be seen. Not really sure what the ceiling is for Demario Douglas. But again, at this point in the draft, I'm swinging some upside. I want to see what Demario Douglas can do with a new coaching staff and an upgrade at the quarterback position. Now that is all I have for you guys today. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and let me know in the comments below, man. I love seeing your guys' support. You guys have been awesome. Being a part of this BDG community has been really cool so far. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And also, if you guys want to check out some of my personal content, go over to the League FFB on YouTube. Let me know in the comments of my videos if you came over from BDGE. Want to see how strong this community is over here and see if it translates to supporting me over on my other channel. So I would appreciate you guys doing that. Again, you can find me at the League FFB. Find me on X at Andrew Tutru. And more importantly, thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. Support us over here at the BDGE Dynasty channel. Make sure you're subscribed to that because those videos will only be exclusively on the Dynasty channel after about two Two weeks and with all that being said i'll see you on the next one guys peace out